Hello and welcome back. For those of you who tuned in to my previous podcasts and webinars, all related to the economic and financial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm Rick Bozinski, Chief Economist at Ibis World. Today is episode six, which is a continuation of my last four webinars, so suggest you check these out. Again, the theme will be focusing on industries that are not particularly well positioned for recovery after the crisis begins to fade. I'll also discuss some notable exceptions when compared to previous cycles. There are quite a few in this episode. And as in previous webinars, I employed several IBIS World historically based metrics to help in this assessment, one being a volatility index, the next a risk trend prior to the COVID-19 crisis, and finally a calculation of the compound annual industry growth rate during the last cycle. As a point of reference, here are the industry groups I covered so far by episode, sort of an index for your convenience. I provide this for those of you that might have a specific line of business interest so you can take a look back at the data I compiled and listen to my comments. And today I'll explore the following, broadcasting and telecommunications, insurance, some miscellaneous services, professional, scientific, and technical, and finally, the healthcare industry, which I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in sort of a different context for you. Let's kick things off with broadcasting and telecommunications, or is it really broadcasting, telecommunications, and entertainment. Note that radio broadcasting and satellite TV providers didn't fare well during the previous cycle and were headed in the wrong direction even before the COVID crisis raised its ugly head. But there's much, much more to the story in that industry reliance have become blurred by massive M&A activity. I strongly suggest you read my article on the subject as attached, which was co-authored with Dev Strychek and Ken Kirby. Okay, for example, think of the conglomerate AT&T, the world's largest provider of mobile telephone services and the largest supplier of landlines. They are also the parent of mass media giant Warner Media, making it the world's largest media and entertainment company. So not only does AT&T control a significant portion of the information highway, and telecommunications, but it also owns a serious portion of the highway's traffic content. Think of the competitors in this space, Disney, NBC Universal, CBS, Netflix, how about Apple's deal with HBO? And also think of Verizon and Comcast and all the cable cutting that's going on. So volatility wasn't necessarily an issue historically in this space, but now, industry definitions are becoming increasingly blurred. So smaller players in this arena will continue to get gobbled up or simply disappear. So beware. How about insurance carriers and related activities? The insurance industry is like other businesses vulnerable to a slowdown in economic growth, but tends to rebound reasonably well. According to the table here, only property, casualty, and direct insurance carriers aren't positioned to perform well as their risk index was on the rise even prior to the pandemic. But now most businesses in this group are under increasing stress on several fronts, quite a departure from the past. Claims will likely increase specifically for long-term care, life, and disability insurance. Many carriers could see a surge in claims involving health travel, event cancellation, plus business interruptions caused by social distancing, and even some supply chain related claims. Moreover, an erosion of credit quality may trigger serious losses in their portfolios. Reinsurers, the insurer of insurance companies, face unprecedented stress, a monumental departure from the historical metrics in this table. Unfortunately, this is not a happy group of businesses now. They will probably lag behind a general recovery. Let's take a quick look at some miscellaneous professional, scientific, and technical services that aren't positioned well for recovery. Those with very high risk intensity are either extremely volatile businesses or were headed in a riskier direction prior 
to COVID-19. Fashion designers and photography didn't show up on the radar here, but this is extremely misleading. Both are high risk industries according to IBIS World's forward looking risk rating scores found in our industry early warning system, a tool in use by numerous clients. Let me finish off this segment by discussing a very hot and relevant topic, the broad healthcare industry where many banks are exposed. There are several obvious facts that you probably don't need to be reminded of, but here they are anyway. Number one, the Obamacare debate is a political question of legalities and the effectiveness of health insurance exchanges that will forge its way once again into the political agenda with renewed vigor as the November elections creep forward. Number two, it's all about costs and delivery especially costs of health care services and health insurance. Number three, there has been a tremendous level of M&A activity across the board in healthcare. Again, see the paper I mentioned. This trend will indeed accelerate. This is important stuff. Number four, the industry in general held up well in past recessions, but number five, the healthcare world has clearly changed and there are new risks and opportunities. So let's look at ambulatory health care services, outpatient care. Take a look at this table. Looks promising for a rebound when social distancing restrictions are relaxed and the economy starts to slog its way towards recovery, right? I'm not making this into a fireside chat, but I'm somewhat cognizant of the healthcare business as my wife is a doctor of physical therapy whose outpatient practice in women's health is now non-essential and her business is shut down in the state of Maryland, just north of Washington, D.C. Note her industry has a very high risk intensity, unlike others on the table. By the way, she's now volunteering time at the front lines, like many of her outpatient colleagues, as a high-tech janitor, cleaning, disinfecting. And here are IBIS World's early warning system forward-looking risk scores for outpatient care. Again, these are looking okay. This group stands a solid chance of recovering without much delay once the economy turns around. But even in the near term, maybe even longer, think about the price being paid by the many health care workers that are not in even medium or high income categories. Many have been furloughed, some fired, and for how long? They have credit card bills and mortgages to pay. I'm not sure how far government aid will support these folks. Are you? Just another risk to consider on the consumer lending side. As for nursing and residential care facilities, looking at IBIS World's historical metrics and our early warning system risk scores, there are no obvious red flags, the exception being orphanages and group homes. Retirement communities are a very interesting case as they are a growth industry, see the chart, but again, you might want to check out the attached M&A paper for some interesting nuances. There are plenty. Hospitals, well, they are living in a brand new world, unfortunately. Obviously, the COVID-19 crisis has strained healthcare capacity in areas of the country considered hotspots for the virus. In some parts of the country, states have allowed bankrupt hospitals to reopen to increase capacity. Risks are higher than ever. To be honest, our historical indicators, as shown, offer little guidance. There is a, a new normal, perhaps an abnormal. Check out this chart. Consolidation and a changing U.S. healthcare market continue to drive M&A healthcare activity to record levels. Well, that's it for today. I'll shift gears next week to consider unemployment and the labor market. Till then, stay safe and Godspeed.